All right, so I'm ready to review a bit from last time. So if you haven't already answered all of these review questions that I have in the doc, um, you know, pause me and do that now uh, because I'm just gonna be walking through um, kind of the reasoning behind those. Uh, kind of big picture here is that we're learning to create new types. Um, when you have a type, you can create multiple objects from it. And that's why I like to think of a type as a cookie cutter, right? I can create a lot of similar objects. And, you know, we've been creating lots of objects in even the previous course, right? We maybe have the dictionary type and we create a lot of different dictionary um, objects. We're kind of taking it to the next level of actually defining new types now that might be very domain specific. Um, for example, maybe I have um, a type for movies and the information associated with those. And when we're creating a new type, we aren't just thinking about what attributes or information is involved. We're also thinking about what um, functions are gonna be involved for this new type. And so when we're creating these new types, we're doing it with something called a class. And, uh, and when we're putting these new functions inside the class, they have a special name and that is a method. And uh, methods are kind of trickier in terms of how we um, write them, which is one of the things that I think is important for us to get a solid basis of now. So this was the um, first snippet of code uh, that we are starting with in that review doc, which you've already answered these questions. And, and so the first question, well, which one of these things was an attribute? Uh, dog, name, malt, Fido. And the answer is that, uh, well, I guess I see two attributes here. Um, I, I have a dog.name and a dog.age. So either name or age would be a fine answer. And I guess name is only one of the last. The answer here is definitely two. Um, name is an attribute. Um, this one is a little bit trickier, right? So I'm trying to figure out what gets printed here or do we crash? And well, I, I see that there's some print statements in both my methods. So the, the real important question here is, uh, do either of my methods run? And the answer here is that no, neither of them run because I'm not calling them. The only methods that get called automatically are what we call special methods. And um, there's a number of them that we're gonna be learning some of them today, but all the special methods will have two underscores before and after the name. I don't see any special methods here. So nothing gets called automatically, nothing is printed. And, and of course we don't crash. Okay, so it was a bit of a trick question, right? So if I actually name it properly, so it is a special method, init um, underscore underscore. Uh, well, this version is now uh, what we call a constructor. And it gets called automatically when this code runs down here. And, uh, and so absolutely, this will get printed. And you can see I also added some parameters down here, which was kind of the trick part earlier, right? So this won't crash anymore. And we can see that we're using the parameters in the constructor to set up our attributes. It's a very common pattern that we'll have code like this, dog.name equals name and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have our dog. And, um, and our dog is referred to by a variable named Fido. And there's four different ways that we might try to call the speak method. And one of them is wrong. And the one that is wrong is the first one. And, and that's wrong because speak is inside of the dog class. And I'm not making that clear, right? I'm kind of almost imagining that speak is some sort of global function um, and it's not. Right? When we start putting these functions inside of classes and making the methods, um, it's very possible that different classes could have methods of the same name. Right, So I can't just simply use a function name. Um, I can't simply use a method name like I would for a regular function. Second question is which one of the following uh, is not an example of type-based dispatch? Okay, So what this means is Imagine that I have other classes, right? So I have dog, cat, I don't know, gorilla, whatever. And let's say I don't know what Fido refers to. Is Fido referring to a cat or a dog? Uh, Type-based dispatch means that when I am calling my method, the method that actually gets called depends on the type of Fido, right? If Fido is a cat, then cat.speak gets called. If Fido is a dog, dog.speak gets called. And, and so I can see the one that does not have type-based dispatch is number three, dog.speak. Um, even if Fido is, an, is a cat, I'm gonna be calling the dog version of the method in example three, right? So that's not type-based dispatch. And that's gonna get us into trouble if I say I have a list of objects that are of maybe different animal types. 
Okay, the last question is which style is preferred? Um, and it turns out in this case, it's the shorter one. I like to say object dot method parentheses. And these two are exactly equivalent, right? So it's good to keep in your mind that option two is just a shorthand for option four, right? So option two is a little bit weird, right? Because, well, why is it weird? I, I, it looks like I'm passing in one, uh, one argument, but I'm expecting two parameters, but I'm actually doing two, right? So Fido in line two is actually doing two purposes. One is it is used to figure out what type I'm dealing with what method what speak method to use and then second it's being used as that first um, parameter and um, and so this is what we'll be doing we'll say fido.speak and that's what i'll always do so what gets passed to the dog parameter here i, I guess i've already talked about it a little bit uh, but it's going to be the same object that fido refers to fido and dog will be referring to the same dog object Okay, now that first parameter has a special name. Um, it's the receiver parameter. And well, whatever goes in the receiver parameter is kind of this special argument, which is whatever uh, is right before the method call. So fido.speak, so fido is going into the receiver in this case, um, uh, it's dog. And, and I can call the receiver whatever I want in Python. Python doesn't care. But basically every programmer uses the same name here. There's a convention. And the better name that you should always use is, is self. And, and that's true in both of these methods. Now, I wanna just, before I wrap this up, I wanna step through it in Python Tutor as well, just to kind of really understand how this all works. So this is the code we've been dealing with. Um, you can see I'm, see I'm creating two different, um, two different dogs. And so let's step through this. Um, first, I have dog is a type that's referring to this um, class and the class has multiple methods in it. Um, that's kind of not the very interesting part. Um, the interesting part is here when I am creating a new dog, right? So when I run this line of code, well, it's going to call my constructor, but be, even before it calls the constructor, it's going to create a new dog object for me that'll get passed to the dog parameter. So I run this and, and you see I have this new dog object, or I might call it an instance. And my receiver, the dog variable, is referring to that instance, okay? And, and I have these parameters, Fido, name and age, which have Fido and nine. And what I'm about to do in these next lines of code is I'm gonna add those to my dog instance. And, and when I do that, okay, so I'm creating my dog, dog.name equals name, dog.age equals age. Really, you can see that the picture that Python Tutor draws for an object looks a lot like it does for a, for a dictionary, right? And, and so often in these cases where you have a bunch of dictionaries that have the same keys and values, or I guess just the same keys, um, it's often the case that um, what I'm doing now is more appropriate. I actually have a new type uh, because all the instances of this type have the same information. Okay, and notice that even though there's no return here, I'm automatically returning back my my dog object to go into Fido, right? So, so two things happen automatically, right? The dog was created for me, and, and I can think of the dog as automatically being returned. So now Fido, Fido refers to that new dog object over on the right. And now I'm gonna create a second dog. Um, and so I'm gonna pass in Sam and three <clears throat> to my constructor, along with a new dog object. So I'm gonna do that. Um, here I am. And, uh, and so you can see that, well, you know, Fido refers to my old dog instance. Now I'm in the process of in the constructor referring to my new dog instance. And I'm going to fill that in just like I did the last one, right? I'm creating another dog. Again, it looks a lot like a dictionary. It automatically gets returned. And, and at the very end, I have Sam and, and Fido that are referring um, to two different dog objects.